Ready? So good morning, everybody. Good morning. And we want to say hello to those who may be watching us online. Uh, this is our sixth week in our study of the book of Proverbs, and today we're going through seven chapters. So we're not going to read very much, okay? I hope you read ahead of time. Would you uh, turn to your lesson, please? And uh, let's go to the uh, hymn, and then we'll do the prayer. Uh, Okay, if they read the hymn verse, Allison, will the folks hear it? Uh, kind of, yeah. all right. Would everybody please read verses 1 and 2 of the hymn? Go ahead. Take my life, O Lord, renew. All right, let me read. Take my voice and let me sing praises to my Savior King. Take my lips, keep them true, filled with messages from you. Take my silver and my gold, all is yours a thousandfold. Take my intellect and use every power as you shall choose. Everybody, make my will and your holy shrine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is your own, it shall be your royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at your feet, treasure store. Take myself, Lord, let me be yours alone, eternally. That sounds like Proverbs, doesn't it? That the whole verse of that hymn is in our hymn book, and it sounds like Proverbs on, on uh, hands and feet, voice, and silver and gold, those are all topics in the book of Proverbs. All right, let me pray the prayer. Everybody up at the top. O oh Lord, all our doings are worth nothing without love. Send your Holy Spirit to pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love for you and for our neighbor. Grant us this love for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right. Um, got a couple of things. If you want to write some things down on your worksheet, you can before we get to the chapters. Luther calls Proverbs. This is old Marty, you know, we're coming up to Reformation. So Luther calls Proverbs a daily handbook and devotion. I thought that was pretty good. A handbook to read on a daily basis to live as a confident child of God. Maybe we should do that more. Read Proverbs, you know? And, and all, you don't have to read the whole thing, but just read five verses a day. It is a book of good works for godly living in the things of God. It is a book of good works for godly living. And we're learning that, aren't we? I mean, we are. And whether it's our speech, our money, helping the poor, the king, uh, whatever it is, living together in a family, whatever. Uh, it's, it gives us a guideline of good works of godly living. Now, I preached on uh, some, uh, one of the verses in the chapters for today back in 2016, and I, I, I wrote these notes down. There's no, story, there's no shortage of foolishness in the Old Testament. You know why? Moses calls Israel a foolish and unwise people in the book of Deuteronomy. That's what one of his farewell addresses before he was taken up into heaven. He says, you Israelites are a foolish and unwise people. <laughs> Pretty tough, huh? I mean, God could have picked a better people. He really could have. All right, now I got a few other things. Psalm 14, verse 1. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool has said in his heart. By the way, I'm, I, I was watching a TV show. Don't remember what it was. But they were over in Arizona, I think, someplace. Oh, yeah, 57 million years ago, this river valley was formed. And then the next gal said, yeah, 100 million years ago, these mountains came up and were formed. I know. 
why don't you just say 200 million or 50,000 million years ago? Huh? And of course, the whole idea is there's no God. All of this is here simply by accident. Just think about that. You're here by accident. Well, some of us more than others. But the fool has, okay, and, and foolishness shows itself primarily in our, give me an answer, speech. Speech, often, yeah. You can disagree with me. And then in the New Testament, the word foolishness is used in relationship to in the New Testament, foolishness, the word, is used in relationship to? No. No. The cross. The cross is foolishness to human beings. But to those who believe, it is the power of God. Think about that, people. Okay? Yeah. By the way, I found a new website. Would you write this down? If I can remember. All right, write it down. I should write it down on mine. D, D, the letter D, J. Oh my gosh, who was that? K, M, dot org. DJKM. And you, you probably do, nobody's familiar with that. That is Dr. James Kennedy Ministries. Remember James Kennedy, the Presbyterian preacher from down in Florida? Back in the 90s, the evangelism explosion? Anyway, he's passed away, died in 07. And, uh, but they have a ministry and a website. And I'm going to start looking at this. This stuff is really evaluating our culture. Very biblically God, Jesus-based, at least it appears to me when I haven't looked at it, but DJKM. One of the things they talk about is, oh, our big concern for the, the, um, the vulnerable in our society. You know, we're all concerned about the vulnerable. And yet, we slaughter unborn children. And yet, and they have an article on slave trade of young girls and children on, on, for sexual abuse. Think about that. It's actually D. James. Yeah, D. James Kennedy. But you can look it up at djkm.org. You can look it up. Anyway, I, I think I'm going to start using that. That is a, a biblically-based group that's looking at our culture. It's hard to come by those things, you know. All right, I got that off my chest. Let's move on. Proverbs chapter 16. Everybody there? We're not going to read everything, so I hope you read. All right? I'm going to start with verses 1 through 5. Let me read. To man belongs the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. All a man's ways seem innocent to him, but motives are weighed by God. I want you to put a star by that one. All of a man's ways seem innocent to him. That's true, right? For we think, well, you know, I'm doing this for the right reason. But God, the motives are weighed by the Lord. A lot of times we think we're doing it out of good motives, but it's for selfish reasons. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Powerful. We need to learn that in the church. Whenever you undergo something new, you commit it to the Lord, right? And by the way, what was the proverb last week? A thing well begun is... Didn't I tell you this? Last week. A thing well begun is half done. In other words, if you begin something well with good motives, commit your way to the Lord and say, Lord, this is our plan. Guide us and lead us. A thing well begun is half done. Good wisdom. All right. Verse 4. The Lord works out everything for his own ends, even the wicked for a day of disaster. Think about that. He works out He works out everything he works out the wicked for a day of disaster 
The Lord detests all the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. All right, we're gonna, let me just share a few things. So we'll go back to verse 1. The plans of the heart are from man, but from the Lord comes the reply of the tongue. The plans of your heart. Human judgment is fallible, right? The plans of your heart and mind. We can think, oh, I have the best motives, but a lot of times we don't. So you, if you want to write these down, you can. Human judgment is fallible, F-A-L-L-I-B-L-E, because humans are, can be self-deceptive. Humans are self-deceived, right? And the Lord has complete knowledge of your motives and mine. You know, and you got to be honest with that. When you, when you understand that, that helps you to become what? No, it helps you to become more honest, right? Oh, well, I can fool you if all I care about is fooling you, but God knows. So if you understand that, you realize you're not fooling anybody. And God knows, and probably the other people are going to figure it out. Okay? Uh, commit to the Lord whatever you do, okay? The Lord sees straight, uh, he sees, uh, straight and evaluates, oh, the Lord sees and evaluates our human motives. We cannot, res we cannot escape responsibility for our actions. Things do have a way of coming back, don't they? You know, think about that, stealing a little bit. If I just steal a little bit, that's not much, right? But it's still stealing, and stealing a little bit always goes to something more. So if you stop at the bottom, you're not going to get worse, correct? If I lie a little bit, tell a fib. Oh, there's nothing wrong with telling a fib. Or if I exaggerate a little bit, right? There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, we are... We cannot as evade the responsibility of our own actions. We, and, we, and you can write this down too. Please, write this down. We cannot blame God. We can't blame God. And I'm telling you, I think we do that a lot. We cannot blame God. And we do. Yeah, why did, why did God let this happen to me? Yeah. I'm a good person. Oh, I've heard, I've heard that as a preacher. You know, I'm a good person. I remember visiting, I shouldn't say this. Remember some, visiting someone, I'm not going to say who. Well, I've got a picture of Jesus on the wall in the, in the dining room. And that was the inclination that I'm a good person, and I got, you know, I'm, Jesus is watching over me. You got to be careful about that, right? Because, and I deserve it. Yeah, you got to be careful. Hey, Scott, you got to be careful about that because when bad things happen, people have a tendency to blame God. And then your faith is in jeopardy. If you, and the other thing we got to guard against, forgive me for saying this, the only time I go to church, show up in church, is when? No. When I need something. When I need God to fix this problem. I need him to help my daughter or my, you know, my friend. Then I go and I pray. Think about that. That's, that's it. So God is just your, your little tool that you use to get what you want. Otherwise, I got no time for him. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on. All right. Uh, anyway, we cannot blame God. All right, let's go to verses uh, 17, 18, and 19. Where are we? No, I said verses. Where, yeah. yeah, the highway of the upright. Verse 17. Uh, the highway of the upright avoids evil. He who guards his way guards his life. And that means what? We're in chapter 16, Scott. That view, if he who guards his way, in other words, you have to... Do what is right. You have to guard your steps and guard your behavior. It's a conscious effort. 
correct? You have to think about what you're doing. And by the way, can you think of times where you were tempted, where a temptation comes out of nowhere? Uh, just uh, it could be a dumb little thing, you know, to st- take this or. <coughs> okay, all right, yeah, I'm thinking of s- other stuff, but tempted, you know, and it, they just pop out, don't they? They just pop out, and it's it, usually it's a little thing, um, or or we're tempted to say something we shouldn't say, or we're tempted to judge, judge, jump to conclusions. That's what I've, I've heard a lot of people. That was a favorite of my brother. My brother would say, they're jumping to conclusions. That's how they get their exercise, by jumping to conclusions. All right. You never heard that? No. Yeah, jump. Yeah, that's how they get their exercise. By, oh, my, write it down. Save it. Yeah. Verse 17, uh, the highway of the upright avoids evil. He who guards his way guards his life. Pride, circle 18, we're going to 18. Pride goes before the f- destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. I remember memorizing that as a kid. Anybody memorize that? Pride cometh before the fall. Yeah. I remember that, memorizing that as a kid, pride. Verse 19. Better to be lowly in spirit and among the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. I don't think we Americans would agree with that. I don't think we want to be, we want to be with the lowly and among the oppressed. We want to be among the, with, we will share the plunder with the proud and the wealthy, right? I, I, don't, I don't think we want that. Go to verse 24. A wise man's heart guides his mouth. Oh, okay, well, let me read it. And his lips promote instruction. Oh, here we go, I'm sorry. I don't have good lighting here. Pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the... Now, let's just stop there for a moment. Let that sink in. Verse 24, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and healing to the bone. What does that mean, people? Well, yeah, but it also, the power of kind and pleasant words. And many of us are apt to not give kind and pleasant words, or some of us are not, right? I mean, we can, we can be nasty and mean. But the power, yeah, just put me behind a seat. A drive, uh, put me behind the steering wheel and they take me on the 118. Uh, the power of pleasant words affect other people's bodies and souls. And I think that's true personally. If, bad, if unpleasant words are coming out of your mouth, they're coming, they're affecting you inside, physically and emotionally. If you're angry all the time, you got, your body is angry, correct? Think about that. Maybe we need to learn that. Then you get sick. Then you get sick. You know, if we were, if we, if we were raised in a uh, German household, you know, or what, who, what other country likes to get angry? The Italians, do they get angry? The Italians? The Irish and the Germans, we like to get angry. Yeah, boy, because we're right. You betcha. And I will tell you how right we are. Chapter 17, please. All right, let me read verse 1. Better a day crust, oh, better a dry crust, I don't know, with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. Isn't that a great passage? Better a dry crust of bread with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting and all kinds of food with strife. Oh, my gosh. All right, let me read here. Um, What do I got? Chapter 17 is a hodgepodge of sayings. There's no central theme. Although there are 10 verses 
that speak about domestic strife and families. This is a chapter that talks about domestic strife. Verse 1 and uh, verse 2, a wise servant will rule over a great disgraceful son, so on, okay? So that's one of them, 10, ten verses. Um, oh, look, verse 5, look at that. He who mocks the poor shows contempt for the maker, yes. All right, let's go to verse 12. Let me read verse 12. This is interesting. Better to meet a bear r robbed of her cubs than a fool in his folly. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? Better to meet a bear robbed than a fool. Uh, many sayings points to our foolish actions of these sayings. Let's go to verse 22, please. Uh, where are we? A cheerful heart is good medicine, yes. but a crushed spirit drives up the bones. You should circle that one. That's a good one again. A cheerful heart. You know, and how do you, if you're a crabby person, how do you get a cheerful heart? Huh? Yeah, but how do you do that? You have to work on yourself. You know who is the most cheerful person? I visited her yesterday. Cheer, uh, no, Jean. Jean. In my opinion, yes. Yeah. Very, even with all her struggles and everything, very positive, very happy. Until now that she's in a new place. I don't blame her. But seriously, you know, uh, let's read that one more time. What verse was that, 22? He, where is it? Oh, a cheerful heart is good medicine but a crushed spirit dries up the bones and just makes you wither, right? Yes. You, you, by the way, the other thing is, you can't let a tragedy in your life become the focus of your life, the seminal event. Is that a right word, seminal? Yeah. Don't let a tragedy in your life become the, defi I know, the defining moment of your life. And a lot of people do, don't they? They go back to whatever happened years ago, and this happened, and they bring it up, don't they? They bring it up, and it may have been 40, 50 years ago or more. And that is the defining moment, which is a tragedy, right? Especially if it happened when you were 20 years old, now you're mad for the next 60 years. You got to let things go, because we live in a world of Sin and injustices, and you're gonna not life is not gonna treat you fairly. Correct? You're what? Yes. And and there's health in forgiving for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, finally, if you don't forgive, the other person's long gone. They they've forgotten, they don't care, but you're still carrying it. Yeah. Uh, that's the height of idiocy, isn't it? I'm still mad. Oh, he's been dead for 30 years, but I'm still mad at him. Man. 27 and 28, people. 27. A man of knowledge uses words with restraint. A man of understanding is even-tempered. Even a fool is thought wise if he keeps silent. A discerning and discerning if he holds his tongue. So this is good, isn't it? A man, a person of wit, knowledge uses words with restraint. All right? You can write this down if you want. You got the right words at the right time are the right thing to do. The right words at the right time, okay? Uh, patient and calm, speech and silence. Let's talk about speech and silence. Let's talk about it. Anybody want to say, say, anybody want to say anything about speech and silence? Yes. What do you want to say? <laughs> you have that memorized. <laughs> you did. Oh, that's in the book of Proverbs. Okay. All right. So, yeah, good for you. Wow. The, the right words at the right time. Have you ever been in a situation where you did that? Well, can anybody want to give an example? 
the right words. Okay, I, I can say this. Um, I, there are a couple of episodes in my ministry that I can think back to. One I'm not going to share with you. Well, a guy came in. Let me say this. Somebody came in crabbing about life. Crabbing about his wife and crabbing about this and that. You older guy. And I, I was I thinking to myself, you know, I should be nice to him. You know, and, but you know what I did? I yelled at him. I said, you're an idiot. Something like that. Maybe I did. I said, you've got a wonderful wife who loves you. You've got people like you. You have a good life. And you're sitting in my office crabbing shame on you. And you know what happened? He came back and he thanked me for punching him in the, punching him in the gut. And I was so surprised. I felt bad about it. Okay? Yeah, but well, I don't know. I felt bad. I thought, oh man, I bet I hurt him. The, the other time you bring healing in words, and this is very important, you need to do this, is in, in a, having a prayer with someone. And you guys need, you guys should do that. I have opportunity to do that all the time. Like last week, I was at Bill and Maria's house, and, and you know, it's important to have that. You don't have to say the right things, you know, you just let it come but bring peace. And you know, one of my favorite phrases, you probably can tell, is the phrase, Dear Jesus, let your peace and your presence rest among this, in this house or among these people. The peace and the presence of Jesus. A lot of times when you're in a bad situation, that's what you need, right? The peace and the presence. And to have a sense of his presence. That's powerful, you know? So anyway, think about that. All right, let's move on. Chapter what? 18? Yeah, I'm not... What's, oh my gosh, look at the time. All right. Uh, not much... Uh, speaking and listening is a major topic of this. Uh, there's 10 verses on that. I'm going to read uh, The Fountain of Life. I'm going to read the first eight verses, Okay. Chapter 18, an unfriendly man pursues selfish ends. He defies all sound judgment. A fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinions. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? When wickedness comes, so does contempt, and with shame comes disgrace. So with wickedness comes contempt. Others have contempt for you. The word of, words of a man's mouth are deep waters, but the fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. The fountain of wisdom, an endless fountain. It is not good to be partial to the wicked <laughs> or to deprive the innocent of justice. Yeah. A fool's, uh, politicians and judges need to learn that. A fool's lips bring him strife and his mouth invites a beating. A fool's mouth is his undoing, and his lips are a snare to his soul. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's inmost parts. We're going to stop there. All about talking, isn't it? A lot of it is about speaking. All right. Uh, the fountain of life, a fool's mouth, the origins of speech, comes from within. All right, gossip. All right, let's move on to verse 13. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. You ever have that? Someone who gives you an answer before you, 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 before you even finish the sentence, they got an answer. I hate that. You know? Why, why do we do that? Because I think... You, you got. I think we all have that tendency. We want, we want to fix it, or we think we know something others don't know. And you got to guard. You got to. One of the things you got to learn is to let people work through their own issues, right? Yeah. And well, listen. But you got to let them work through. The, let them come up with their own answer, right? Okay, like reading, reading a map. You ever learn how to read a map as a kid? 
I remember my father says, you have to read the map. I'm going where you tell me to. <laughs> yeah. When you listen without trying to form a response, you actually hear yes. what's being said. And then you can respond to that with questions or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of times if you're if you're ready to respond, you're not listening. That's right. You're thinking about your response. That's true. Yes. Yeah. And another way is instead of answering or giving solving the problem, ask the question. Yeah. yeah that's good. Very good. All right. Where are we? Verse 13. Let me read it again. He who answers before listening, that is his folly and his shame. Some of us, I think, were raised that way with parents. Were you raised with a parent who always had an answer? No? No? Huh? Verse 20 and 21. Uh, From the fruit of his mouth, a man's stomach is filled. With the harvest from his lips, he is satisfied. I'm not sure what that means. And verse 22, or 20 and 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Anybody want to say anything about that? Yeah, you can kill a person real quick with the wrong words, or you can bolster somebody up with their correct words. Okay. The fruit of the, here it is. Yeah, the fruit of the mouth. Isn't that an interesting image? We think of trees having fruit, but your mouth produces fruit, correct? Think about that image. That's a good, you could preach a sermon on that. The fruit of the mouth, okay? Uh, The effects of speech, speech and friendship. Happiness is brought about by good words. You can write this down. I got a couple of things here. We answer before listening. We answer before listening. And the power of the tongue. I got an example in the Bible where um, they probably were listening, but Genesis chapter 3, I read it, where the devil comes and tempts him. And he says, oh, God didn't mean that. And then he tells them the truth. God said, God, he knows, he doesn't, God didn't mean that. He knows you'll know good and evil. Yeah, it was true. It was the truth. Yeah. And the devil was very, very good. Think about everything of Satan. Everything of Satan is a lie. The evil. Okay? Everything of Satan, everything of Satan is a lie. So if it's false or deception or half-truth, that's satanic. And that's true of, in general not just of believers, but of other people. If, if le- our leaders are lying to us, they are instruments of Satan. And if, if people, if our culture is lying to us about things, that's an instrument of, sa- of Satan. You understand that? Yeah. Um, There's something else I was going to say. The, the, in, oh, the, other, the other thing you can always say, if it's a half-truth or not the full truth or a lie, it's of the devil. The second thing is, what's the second test? If it produces chaos and disharmony, it is of Satan. Think about that. and Look at the news. And look, read the paper and look at the news based on that. Half-truths, falsehoods versus truth and chaos. The power of darkness is always in chaos and hatred and evil behavior. You can tell that. And you can tell that among Christians. That doesn't mean they're not Christian, but the devil's working through them. And in our culture and society. Think about that, people. And I think the devil is very well active in our culture. By the way, if you go to this, that, that place I gave you, that djkm.org, they talk a lot about that. 
about the powers of darkness in our culture, and nobody's calling them out. Yeah. Yeah. A what? Where? Roscoe and when it. Yeah, she's probably been here. And she. Yeah, we've. Uh, was she yelling out loud? Yeah. Did she have a bag of stuff? Oh no! I think she's. We, if well, we know, there are several women around. They walk along here. They come to the pantry and they yell out loud. So they're on drugs. Uh, I think we've seen her too. She's clothed a lot, although she was unclothed yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know the powers of drug. In it's one of the great evils of our culture. One of the great evils of our culture. All right, let's go to 19. Verses 1 to, one to 7. Better a, poor, better a poor man whose walk is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. A man's own folly ruins his life, yet his heart rages against the Lord. Now, that is huge. A man's own folly is the cause of his problems, and yet, in his heart, he's what? Mad at God. He's blaming God. Everybody catch that? And that's true. A, 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 man, a, man's own, and a man's own folly ruins his life, and yet he's blaming God for his own stupid actions. That's more common than we think it is. That's the powers of the devil. Wealth brings many friends, but a poor man's friend deserts him. Yeah, that's a difficult one. Let's go on. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of the man who gives gifts. That we should we should put that in that should be in, that should be in a, in stone over the entrance to the Senate and the House. Many curry favor with rulers. Verse seven: A poor man is shunned by all his relatives. How much more do his friends avoid him? <laughs> Though he pursues them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? I got a few more to read. Rage, we don't get our own way. We rage against God when we don't get our own way, when we don't get success, or we get bad things in our lives. All right? All right, instruction and behavior of children is huge in this chapter. There are nine verses on that. Um, in what does true friendship consist? I'm just asking the question. In what does true friendship consist? Willingness to listen, spending time together. Okay? Huh? Okay. No knowing the good and the bad and the ugly. Okay? Can I can I can uh, can still be your friend, doesn't like everything about you, but can still be your friend. That's probably the best friend who says, you know, I don't like you very much. <laughs> but, or the one you argue with. That could be a good friend, right? Huh? You ever have that? There are TV shows where that's on, isn't it? Where the best friends are always in conflict? Huh? Aren't there TV shows with that? Laverne and Shirley? No, maybe not Laverne and Shirley. All right, let's move on. Verse, uh, let me read verse 13. Where are we? Chapter 19? All right, we got a ways to go. Oh my gosh. All right, let's just read verse 17. Uh, where are we? What chapter am I in? 19? All right. 
He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward him for what he has done. Verse 20, listen to advice and accept instruction, and in the end you will be wise. Oh, yeah, listen to advice. And verse 24, uh, the sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He will not even bring it back to his mouth. Anybody, what does that mean? The sluggard buries his hand in the dish, and oh, he's so lazy, he won't even bring it back to eat. All right, all right, let's move on. Chapter 20. Uh, let's go to chapter 20, 30 verses. Uh, the, this chapter is, uh, there are more imperatives than normal. Humans are in total dependency on God. All right, talks about the slugger. Let's go to verse 4, 6, and 13. Verse 4, a slugger does not plow in season. So at harvest time, he looks but finds <laughs> nothing. Those of you who come from farming communities, you know how stupid that sounds. A slugger does not plow in season. At harvest time, he looks. Why does he look? Well, he's an idiot. He didn't plow. You know, it shows how stupid, not only is he lazy, he's stupid too, right? If you were, weren't raised in farming community, you don't get it, I guess. All right, verse, verse 6. Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. That's tough, isn't it? Ooh, uh, yeah. Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man yeah, who can find. Boy, that's tough. That's a real indictment. Let's go to verse 13. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. <laughs> I, I, got, I got a few people, I can think of a few people like that. They love to sleep, right? Uh, and uh, yeah, you can still enjoy sleep and work hard, right? That's one of the, if you work hard, sleep is a great reward. Uh, oh, verse 19, let's go to that. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid a man who talks too much. <laughs> avoid someone who talks too much. I got, I got two stars next to that one. You got an underline? Yeah, yeah, there's an, okay. Uh, let's go to verses 22, uh, where is it here? We're in chapter 20, right? Uh, do not say, I will pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. Yeah, in other words, don't, don't ve yeah, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Don't, pay, don't, don't want to pay him back. Let God take care of it, right? Huh? And he will deliver you. Verse 24, a man's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand his own way? Wow, now th no, no, think about that. A man's steps are directed by the Lord. A person's steps, so you're, if, let's say your steps are directed by the Lord. How can you understand the way you are going? That is, if you let God direct your way. Yeah. You, can, you don't know where he's going to lead you. Has something happened in your life where you have no clue how you got there or how it happened, but it happened, you, you did it, and, or you went, and it was a good thing? Ever have something like that? You have, you have, more than one. Okay, anybody else? No, maybe not. But, uh, but part of that is giving things up to the Lord, too, you know, and saying, I don't know what to do. And, and then... Then you say, okay, Lord, I guess I'm going to do this, right? Yeah. The other thing is running ahead of the Lord because you think you know, and then you end up in a ditch somewhere going, uh, somewhere I made the wrong turn. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and you got to wait for the Lord's timing. Yeah. All right, verse 27, 22, 24, and then I got a note. Let me do 27. Uh, the lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of the man. It searches out his inmost being. Now that is interesting. What does that mean? This, the lamp of the Lord searches the, 
person. How much time we got left? Ten minutes? All right. Well, let me read this. Give up revenge and put the case into the hands of the Lord. Right? Put, give up. Verse 27, I have this note. Let me read it again. The lamp of the Lord searches the spirit of a man. It searches out his inmost being. I have a note here from somewhere. It's beautiful, but it's ambiguous. In other words, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, right, okay, okay. So maybe there isn't an end result. Maybe it's just that he knows what's going on inside of you and me. Oh, okay, I'm thinking of an end result, but there isn't one here. It's just that he searches your spirit and he searches your inmost being. So the Lord knows your inmost thoughts, desires. And that is why, people of God, we need to what? Well, yeah, but we need to confess our sins. We need to confess our sins. That's why the church over the centuries has always had confession as part of the liturgy. I, a poor, I, a poor, miserable sinner. And much of, most of my sins, I'm, I'm convinced most of my sins I'm not even aware because I think they're okay or I don't even realize. So, but the Lord searches my heart. When the Lord knows your inmost being, we talked about this at the beginning, didn't we? When the Lord knows your inmost being, you can't hide from him. So don't try, you know? All right, let's move on. Where are we? Chapter 21? Oh, my gosh. This is never-ending. Uh, a good name is greater than riches. All right, let's read verses 1 and 3. The king's heart... Is the hand of the Lord is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. Okay? A lot of antithetic parallels here, where you know antithetic is the it, the second says the opposite. Rich versus the poor, the danger of self-deception, verse two. All a man's ways seem right to him, but the Lord weighs the heart. Okay? We must always keep ourselves open to the activity of God, which we cannot calculate or control. Oh, I have some good, good quotes here. All right, let me read verse 30. Verse 30 is, where is it? There is no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. All right? I, this, let me read this to you. There is nothing that can succeed against the Lord. A profound theological statement. There, there is the great unknown. The mystery of God still exists. We don't know everything about God. We can't put God in a box and say, this is our God. Okay? Too many Sages or wise people think they have figured God out in a neat little formula. Let me say it again. Too many wise sages think they have figured God out in a neat little formula. Because God is still complicated. And he lives in a world of which you and I only have a little glimpse. Yes? I would, think, I would sense that, right? We think we know everything. We know nothing. Okay? Um, anything else? So verse 30, a profound theological statement. This is the, there is the great unknown, the mystery of God, still exists. Okay? Pastor, 
Yeah, he's sovereign. He's, no one controls him. Yeah, that's, that, maybe that's a good thing. You can't control God to get what you want. I think mothers try to do that <laughs> with their children. They try to control God to get what they are, that they want to get their children to do what they want. No? Yeah, I, oh, I, I, I think so. I think mothers do. I don't know. All right, let's go to chapter 20. Uh-huh. And fathers. And fathers? I don't know. Let's go to chapter 22. <coughs> uh, by the way, um, before we, well, I'll finish this out. All right, let me read. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. Rich and poor have this in common. The Lord is maker of them all. Wow. A prudent man sees danger and takes refuge. The simple keep going and suffer for it. Wow. I'm in verse, uh, chapter 16. Everybody with me? Or chapter 22. Yeah, I'm sorry. Humility and the fear of the Lord bring wealth, honor, and life. Chapter 22, verse 5. In the paths of the wicked lie thorns and snares, but he who guards his soul stay, stays far from them. Here's a good one. Train a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not turn from it. Okay? Verse 8. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble, and the rod of his fury will be destroyed. All right, let me share this with you, please. Um... Train up a child in the way he should go. There's two on training children. Oh, look at verse 9. Uh, he who, where is verse 9? A generous man will himself be blessed. He who shares his food, he who, for he shares his food with the poor. All right? There are six proverbs in this uh, section in, that deal with wealth. Okay? Uh, and then verse 13. The sluggard says there is a lion outside. Or I will be murdered in the streets. What the heck is that? The sluggard, oh, the sluggard says there's an, a lion outside. Or I will, in other words, I'm not going out there to work. Uh, yeah, or makes excuses. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right, laziness makes excuses. That's what I have written down here. All right. Let me tell you something about this section. We're coming to a new section with verse 17. So next week, I think we only have two, two chapters. Yeah, I think, or through 24. But chapters 10, verse 1, through 22, 16, those are the sayings of Solomon. They have 375 single-line proverbs. In other words where they can be antithetic. We have it on two lines or three lines, but in the Hebrew, it's one line across. 375. I never knew this. That is the new, numerical value of the, name, of the Hebrew name for Solomon. So in the Hebrew language, every letter has a numerical value. So you add up the name of Solomon in Hebrew and I'm not sure what that is, Though that numerical value adds up to 375 parabolic, parabolic sayings in these chapters. Who would have done that? Think of, no, well, the, the writers of this, they collected Solomon's sayings and put that all together. Isn't that something? All right, so we're done. Thank you. Solomon, it was great, but uh, we got to move on. All right, uh, so next week, what's the chapters for next week, people? Get your lesson out. Nine, what is it? To 24, 24, 34, okay? So please read ahead of time, and we have three more lessons. One of the interesting things that's happening to me, and maybe it is to you, is that going through Proverbs, you see the Proverbs fulfilled in your daily life more. Are you seeing that? I am. Huh? I mean, wise and foolish, keeping your mouth shut, okay? Riches and poor, give helping. Yeah, and um, 
we, by the way, we had, I don't know what's going on in our, in our world around here. In the, yesterday and today, and it's not even, and to, you know, Monday, yesterday, and today, we have had, I'm probably not going to get the right answer, we had another one today. We've had like 10 or 11 phone calls about the pantry. About the pantry. And we had, we had a, what do you mean, what about it? When is it open? They, they need a, yeah, about coming. And we had a couple come by, not, nice, young, probably in their 30s, 40s. They came by and asked about the pantry. And, and the, I'm glad the guy, this was yesterday, was it yesterday? Or Monday, I don't know. My, uh, Monday afternoon, yesterday, whatever. And he asks, you got anything now? Or the woman asks, you got anything now? And she looked like we got nothing. So I, we came in, um, our, what's his name was here, sorting stuff. So we put together two bags and gave them a bunch of food. And, and boy, were they thankful. Oh my God. They were Caucasian. They were Americans. They weren't like from a foreign country. Yeah, they had a truck. They had a truck. And, uh, but I tell you, the state of people is tough these days. Oh, I, no, I went out. That was for the, no, okay. That was for trunk or treat. That wasn't for, that wasn't for the pantry. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I went, we're, yeah, that's what they're doing there anyway. By the way, we're going to celebrate the 35th anniversary of that pantry. Uh, when? November 12th, yeah. So, yeah. I can't tell you how many people over the last year have talked about pantry and if it opens. Yeah. You don't think people know that? They don't know. I have said that. I have said that, but you don't. Well, let me just tell you, we're open on Thursdays from 11.30 to 1. And all you have to do is they have to bring a photo ID and they get a number, and they have to wait for that, and they can get, they get uh, whatever we have. They get to pick some things on their own, other things people pick. We have about eight to ten volunteers, and there's a hot lunch or a cold lunch that is served every week. Thursdays? Every, well, yeah, every Thursday. We're only open on Thursdays. And, and um, what? All right, yeah, people of God, let me say something. We, yeah, we, we advertise, we put it out there, okay. But God, amazingly, God sends people to us. All right, so relax, relax. What? Yes, of course we do. Yeah. All right, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, give us wisdom, courage, and strength. Dear Lord, guard us from being our own worst enemies. Help us to learn to be silent when we need to. And help us to speak words of healing in the lives of others. Dear Lord, help us to befriend the poor and care for those in need. And help us, dear Father in heaven, to be a blessing, to be your instrument, to be a blessing in the lives of those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodbye, those of you who may be watching. Sorry we kept you late. Hasta la vista, baby. Bye.